first test starting in Jamaica. Now, your memories of playing test cricket in Jamaica, two I'd have thought. Number one, the match that got abandoned. You hadn't faced a ball. Suddenly you drafted in that morning. What, what do you remember <laughs> yeah, of well, all I, of that? I remember, I remember four weeks in Antigua. because those That was probably the last long tour. Um, we, had, we were four weeks in Antigua and various other beautiful parts of, uh, of the Caribbean um, leading up to the first test match in Jamaica. Um, and in that four weeks I did a lot of training and a lot of um, singing karaoke to entertain the boys. Um, a, a lot of everything except for playing cricket until the very first morning of the first test when Jack Russell went down um, ill. So Alex Stewart was in. I think he had yeah he had to take the gloves, mm -hmm. which meant they wanted to play another batsman, and, and that batsman was me, which was which was fantastic. Very excited to play um, a test match in, in what is my sort of ancestral home, Jamaica. Um, and then obviously things were were slightly awry when the ball first ball of the day from a from a very ginger looking um, uh, Curtly Ambrose who ran in very gently and just sort of plopped it down there on a length and it flew over Stewie's head over the keeper's head one bounce four. And everyone was like, all right, this, this could be a quick game. <laughs> and um, yeah, before I knew it, I was in. Uh, again, a very sort of, very sedate Kurt, uh, Courtney Walsh, almost like he knew that there was something up with the pitch. Um, back of a length ball absolutely flew at me from nowhere. Managed to get my hands in front of my face, went straight up in the air for naught. Walked back to the dressing room to find Adam Hollyoak absolutely wetting himself, <laughs> laughing at me. Um, uh, and that was, that was my day, my memories of that first uh, test in Jamaica. Six years later, though, Better memories, of course, and yourself and NASA Hussein, 50s. Different though, wasn't it? Obviously the pitch was better, but the, I can remember you guys getting hit quite a lot and it was a good attack and you really had to bed in and, and get your heads down in those innings. Yeah, um, Fidel Edwards and Tino Best probably, I think probably bowled the quickest that I'd faced in, in Test cricket on a, on a pitch that was that was pretty lively. You know, it was, it was quick, it had a, perhaps a little bit of an uneven bounce. And um, we had to wear a few, uh, more than a few actually, um, to, to manage to eke out a decent first innings total. Um, and that lead that we got in the first innings proved to be absolutely vital because Steve Harmison then came in and took seven for 12 and that game was all over and done with uh, pretty quickly and, uh, and, uh, and, and back to the beach bar again, but this time 1-0 up. What are your memories of that Harmison spell? Because we've spoken to Graham Thorpe about it and... Obviously, he'd been promising up to that point, but everything just clicked, didn't it? And it was a fantastic spell of bowling. It did, yeah. I mean, but the, the, the lead-up we had to the Test match was terrific. I remember um, Harmison, Fred, um, Simon Jones and Matthew Hoggard, our sort of quick bowlers, all sort of wandering around with their shirts off and doing sort of exercises and, and uh, doing their core work and stuff together and really kind of going around as a, as a group. And they were quite, you know, quite intimidating, big bunch of lads. And it was great to have them on your side and looking so sort of up for it and fit. And, um, yeah, and Steve, not only in that game, I think he probably bowled a better spell in the, in the, in the test match afterwards at Trinidad, but, um, but was astonishing, you know, to have every man bar a short leg behind, behind the wicket. I was sat there with, with ice packs literally all the way down sort of one side of my body <laughs> in, the, in the dressing room watching it. Um, and just, you know, it was, it was unbelievable. And one of those peculiar days where every time he bowled the ball in a, in a decent sort of place or an uncomfortable place for the batsman, they nicked it and it was caught, you know, um, and a quick game was a good game. It's the term that's always used in sport now, momentum, but in 2004 you get that win in Jamaica, it just set you up for the rest of the series, didn't it? You, yeah. You've got to try and get off to a good start. We always say this, but England have to try and get off to a good start. Yeah, you do. I mean, it's not, it's not everything. Um, you know, England have, have done some wonderful, uh, wonderful things coming from behind in the, in the last sort of three or four years. But, you know, it, it, difficult tours, with, especially when um, series are getting shorter. You know, you don't always have five test matches to turn things around. And in West Indies, it's only four. And then when West Indies come here before the Ashes, it's only going to be two. So your, your first game is, is, is pretty vital. And, um, you, you know, Setting the tone in the West Indies is a big thing because of the way that the, the, the public get behind the home team if they're good, you know, if they, if they play well, if England go one nil down, I think they'll find things very, very difficult um, because that, uh, one of the great things that we had in the last trip in 2004 in winning that first test match was that the, the West Indian crowds kind of didn't show up. Mm. 
for the for the next few games. They felt that their team was, you know, Steve Harmison kind of destroyed the West Indies sort of whole, you know, their, their whole spirit, if you like. Um, and so we, we felt like we were playing at home from there on in. And I think that would be important for them.